Today we're talking about pruning eggplants and the reasons why you would do that. The reason why you would prune your eggplants is for the same reasons that you would prune your tomato plants, your cucumber plants, all your melons, and any other plants that you would prune. And that is for plant health and to increase fruit quality and productivity. I have four eggplant plants here. The three to the right have all been pruned. We'll take a look at that. And then I will prune the one here on the left on the video so you can see how I decide what to do. So let's take a look at these other plants that have already been pruned. Pruning an eggplant plant is a lot like pruning a tomato plant with one exception and that is we have multiple stalks coming out so in addition to removing the suckers we also need to remove any foliage that's growing in the center because we want to keep the center open for light and air circulation. This particular eggplant plant I have pruned down to three main stalks. Here's one, two, and three. It's typical to prune down an eggplant plant to two, three, or four stalks. Greenhouse growers typically will prune down to just two stalks. Most backyard gardeners don't prune at all, but I would recommend not having more than four stalks at a time because it will reduce the quality, quantity of the fruit and the health of the plant. You can see on this particular stalk that this is actually a sucker and it has an eggplant blossom on here. So instead of cutting the sucker off, I actually cut off that stem and left the blossom so we could have a fruit there. I did the same thing over on this stem here where we actually have a double blossom and I cut off that sucker so it won't grow any further but we can grow fruit on here. And this brings up another point. Sometimes you'll have one, two, or three different blossoms at one location. It's up to you to, to decide how many fruit you want growing in that one location. I prefer just growing one fruit in one location, not to have clusters of two or three. So in this one over here, I will wait till I get a good pollinated blossom that produces a fruit, and then I will remove the other two. I won't remove any of them until I know which one of them is pollinated, because you don't really ever know for sure, even when you hand pollinate. And we're going to be covering hand pollinating also. Since I have three stalks here, you notice I also have three support lines. This is 170 pound polypropylene baler twine, and this is the same twine I use throughout my entire garden for all of my other vertical growing plants. You can see here I've got cucumbers, I've got cantaloupe, I've got spaghetti squash growing on the other side, and they're all growing up the same baler twine. To learn more about vertical gardening, search my channel for vertical gardening. So you can, you can see this plant here has lots of air circulation. There's nothing growing into the center, and each of the three stalks have a support line. On this plant to the left of the previous plant, we have four main stems. You notice I've also removed all the leaves down below, so nothing touches the ground. It's easy for me to weed, fertilize, and get access to the plant. I did the same thing here on the third plant, removing all the lower leaves, and then removing the suckers. Now on this particular one, I decided to keep this sucker here and grow it as a main stock because this one over here actually got damaged and will not grow any further. So I wanted to have four on this one. I like the quality of the stem. It looked healthy. It's got blossoms on it. The leaves look good. So I left this sucker as one of those stems. Also here, this particular one is also a sucker. You can see because it was growing in between two stems and I left this one as one of the main stems. So I have one, two, three, four on this plant here too. Now let's go ahead and come over here where we haven't done any pruning and do some pruning. The first thing I'm going to do when I start pruning is remove lower leaves. That way I can see much better what's going on here on the plant. There, that opens it up quite a bit. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove any leaves that are growing in towards the center or any branches growing in towards the center. Okay, that took care of that. And now I'm going to be removing suckers. Here, for example, is a sucker right here. This particular sucker has three blossoms on it. So it becomes emotionally difficult to remove these suckers once they start getting blossoms and fruit. So don't wait this long to do it. I actually like this branch coming out to the front because it gives me more room inside the plant for air and light. I'm actually going to remove the main stem right here. And you can see very quickly how that opens up that plant. This also allows me to see that I've got a sucker growing over here. You can see it's coming right between the two branches here, just like on a tomato plant. So I'll remove that. I've got another sucker right over here. So I'm going to remove this here. This other branch here looks great, but it has a sucker right here. So I'm going to carefully remove the sucker and not disturb the blossom that's right here next to it. Right now we worked on this branch, this branch, and this branch. Let's keep working around the plant. I don't like this leaf because it's too low to the ground. It's not touching the ground, but I want to get it out of my way. This leaf is growing inside, so towards the middle of the plant, so I'm removing that. And the same thing with this right here. Okay, so that's looking better. This gives me, a, gives me a better view of the plant, what's going on. I'm going to remove this leaf here too. All right. So I've got several growing right here. This is not a branch. This is simply a leaf. So I've got a branch here, branch here, branch here, branch here, and two branches here. So I still have quite a bit more to prune. Wanting to keep this down to no more than four main stems, I'm going to go ahead and take this off right here. And I'm going to remove this over here. And that leaves me with one, two, three, and four main stems. And as I look up this stem here, I see a sucker, so I need to remove that being careful not to damage the leaf next to it or the blossom. Do you see how that immediately opens that up for extra light and air circulation? This one didn't cut very well. Doing it with left handed and it kind of stripped that out. I'm going to go up here. Again I see another sucker growing. So I'm going to go ahead and here carefully above above the fruit and cut that off. And then here's another sucker right here. I can cut that off or probably just pinch it off with my fingers to stop that. And this is going to be the main stalk. I can tell that because it has the fruit on it. Now I'm down to my four main branches. Now I need to give them support. I've already pre-cut some 10 foot lengths of Baylor twine and tied overhand knots on the end so that they don't fray on me. I've taken those lines, just tied an overhand slip knot here on this lower wire. Everything I grow vertically, I use a lower wire. That way I can attach the twine to the wire, not to the plant. That way if I happen to bump the twine, I don't tear the plant out of the ground. To learn more about installing this lower wire, click the link below this video or search my YouTube channel for lower wire. Now I'm going to simply go around each one of the main stalks here and wrap up the twine around it. In this particular case I, had, I ended up with two of the lines going to the front of the grill box and two of them going to the back. You can see how that looks as we look down the grill box here. On the tops I simply tied the same knot I did on the bottom and that's just an overhand knot. As you can see, these lines are not tight. They're loose, but they're tight enough to give support in case there's fruit on there or we have heavy wind or rain. 
Now that the plant is pruned and supported, we can go ahead and hand pollinate. Now you hand pollinate for the same reason that you hand pollinate anything else, and that is the bees and the other pollinators may not be doing the job. It may be too cold, it may be too windy, it may be too rainy, and they just can't get out and do it. So here, just using a cotton swab, I just simply rub the male stamen so that the pollen comes up to the female right here in the middle and then that is pollinated and I would do that to each of the flowers on the plant and that will help the productivity of the plant the best time to do that is early in the morning there you have it we're done supporting pruning and pollinating the eggplants you notice the health of these plants looks great we have excellent color the leaves are nice and thick. We've got lots of blossoms on the plants. And that's with me growing in sand and sawdust. The reason why these plants are so healthy is because I'm feeding them the Midlighter Weekly Feed. That's an all natural mineral fertilizer that I mix by myself. I get two of the three components here locally and the third, the micronutrients, I get from midlightergardening.com. I highly recommend whatever you're growing that you use the Midlighter Weekly Feed on all your fruits, vegetables, fruit trees, flowers, and so forth. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. And if you properly thin your plants, whether it's eggplants, cucumbers, melons, or so forth, you will end up with great tasting fruit, healthy plants, and a great harvest.